Well, good Monday afternoon to you, and I uh, trust that you're having a wonderful day as we've enjoyed a beautiful day outside. I've been able to get some work done on the building outside today, but just a beautiful spring day, of course, that uh, watches things begin to bloom and come alive, but we're excited about that. And uh, this week, we're going to continue to show you different parts of the building, Lord willing, and I'll tell you where I'm standing in just a moment and uh, show you some things about that. But the other thing I want to try to do this week is give you some devotions in relation to what some has called the Holy Week or the Passion Week. And uh, then with an emphasis on the last week of the Lord Jesus Christ. And now I'm not going to use this time necessarily to debate what, what day Christ was crucified and all those type of things. Uh, but we are going to take some things that we can learn from this. And uh, you know, when you think about the last week of the Lord Jesus' life on this earth and lived 33 years on this earth and the last week of it you take the gospel records Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and I believe there's 89 chapters in there and 25% of those are given to that last week uh, 7 of uh, Matthew's gospel or chapter in Matthew's gospel and 5 out of 16 in Mark and 4 out of 24 in Luke and 7 and a half out of 21 in John. So about 25% given to the last week of Christ. Because I remind you, that is the reason he came to this earth. Yes, he was a great teacher. Yes, he was a, a great philosopher. And yes, he was a miracle worker. But he came to give his life for our sins. And so I'm going to give you a, a thought from uh, what we would call the triumphal entry. And uh, many would have say this would have happened uh, yesterday uh, as far as Sunday goes. But this gives us, as I said to you, some emphasis. Matthew chapter 21, and we won't take the time to read every account because it's given in all four gospel records. But I really have two lessons that I want you to leave, to leave with you that I hope will help you. Uh, you know he comes in on the cold, on the donkey, and he comes in the, and when he goes to get it, the Bible says that he, he told them to say, the Lord hath need of them. And it reminds us that God uses things and God has a purpose. And so when we think about the donkey and, and the fact that God can use us to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And then if you see the scene unfold in your mind as they're laying out branches and garments and, and, and praising the Lord and they're, they're saying Hosanna and, and it's a fulfillment, of course, of Old Testament prophecy, but it shows the peace that he comes to bring and, and he doesn't come riding in on a war horse, but he comes in on this lowly donkey and, and the peace that he's going to bring. And you find an interesting thing at the end of all of this in verse 10 of Matthew 21. As the, as the crowd cries out, the Bible says in verse 10, and when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? And I've got those three words marked in my Bible. The, the city is asking the question, who is this? Of course, the answer is this is Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. And you begin to testify of what he's done. And I read one other passage, one other verse in, in, Luke, in Luke's account in, in Luke 19 and verse 40, just one verse. As they're carrying on in such an amazing way, uh, praising God, literally the question comes, said, Master, should we rebuke them? And Jesus answered and said, I tell you, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. And he said, man, what an amazing scene. And you see people praising God and worshiping God and, and, and you see them and, and so much so they get carried away and people say, should we calm them down a little bit? And Jesus said, the stones will cry out. I have two lessons really for you, an application to this triumphal entry. One of them is this, and that is we should not let someone else do our praising for us. Uh, some preacher said it this way, I don't want the stones worshiping God for me. And so we have a responsibility to praise God for who he is and praise Christ for the sacrifice that he made. But I give you this second thought, and that is this. When we praise the Lord like we should, it will make other people say, who is this? When we make the, if we want to say it this way, when we make a big deal out of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and, and praising him for who he is and, and what the sacrifice that he's made for us, it will make the whole city say, who is this? And I want to say this to you during this time, the world needs to know who Christ is. And it is our responsibility to be praising him in such a way that others say, well, who is this that you're talking about? 
And I'm praying that God does that during these times. Now, I told you I'd tell you where we're standing uh, here. And uh, you see the beautiful tower behind me. There'll be water fountains here. And this is actually uh, the opposite side of the auditorium where we've been. And we're over on the nursery and preschool side. I told you this week we'll be looking at some of that. And uh, this will be the water fountain. And you see the, the nice tower work they've just finished. And you can see the spacers are still in there waiting for that to be grouted. And, of course, a men's restroom here behind me. And ladies' restroom. And I'll just show you quickly uh, the entrance. Uh, to the other part of the building. And uh, you can see, uh, if you come right where I'm standing, and uh, you look over to my right, there's a, another temporary door there, but there'll be a set of double doors there. And that's where most of the parking is. And uh, people will be able to come in, walk right in this way, and you can go uh, straight, and that'll take you into the fellowship hall where the children classes are, and we'll go back there uh, one day soon. Or you can start down this hallway, and uh, we'll begin here in this oldest room, and uh, this would be uh, the kindergarten classroom. And uh, you see the nice big room, and you'll see where the sinks go and closets and all that type of thing. And then as you turn and go down this hallway, and we'll continue on down this hallway this week, uh, you'll end up down there in the bed babies and the nursery and all of that. And so we're excited to see this preschool wing and have an opportunity. And my burden and, and my desire is to have an opportunity to introduce another generation to who the Lord Jesus Christ is. And I'll remind you this week, especially as we think about Easter and everything, let's be praising the Lord for what he's done.